You're listening to the Voice of Russia in London. I'm Alice Lanyade. Welcome to Curtain Up, the program about Russian culture in the capital. We've got news and views about the city's most exciting exhibitions, films, concerts, plays, and festivals with a Russian flavor. With me is Julian Gallant, the director of Pushkin House, the mecca for Russians and Russophiles in London. We're also joined in the studio by Svetlana Adjubey, the director of Academia Rosica, the cultural organization set up in 2000 to promote cultural ties between Russia and the English-speaking world. I'd like to start, Svetlana, by asking you about what's happening this weekend. I know you've got a, a wonderful Russian Wave festival happening in Hammersmith. Could you tell us a bit about that, please? It's a festival of contemporary Russian culture. We are showing films, we are going to have poetry readings, presentations of contemporary Russian artists. So it's a multimedia cultural festival. But it's very short. It's only for one day. And where is it taking place? In Riverside Studios. Uh -huh. This is why it's called Russian Wave. Russian Wave at Riverside Studios. Okay. And what kind of films are you going to be showing on Sunday? We are going to start our film program with contemporary Russian animation. As you know, Russian animation is one of the highly regarded animations in the world. Yes, absolutely. It's got a uh, reputation. They got lots of, yes, they got lots of prizes at international animation festivals. So we are going to show new Russian animations from the leading animators. Well, if you can, in a nutshell, tell, tell us what what is the, say, let's say the three aspects that make Russian, Russian animation so unique and so different from, say, American animation? Russian animation is very unique. It's based, I would say, on classical drawings mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, classical mm -hmm, paintings mm -hmm, rather mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. cartoon mm -hmm, style mm -hmm. as Japanese and American animation mm -hmm. or uh, most of international mm -hmm. animation is based. It's more art house. It's more poetic. Also, it tells... Stories, I think, uh, at the heart of Russian animation, as at the heart of Russian culture, is not action, but emotion. Oh, as you say, I, mean, I think is that's it? the key point, isn't it? Emotion, mm -hmm. feelings, mm -hmm. um, ideas that come through, and almost mm -hmm. stronger with the absence of a human being, don't they? You almost have a, a stronger a stronger image or a stronger message through the... And that, I think, actually, mm -hmm. the difference that uh, Russian, uh, Russian ca cartoons or Russian animation... Mm -hmm. Uh, using a traditional style of painting or drawing, mm. it's uh, more human in a way and more, more emotional, mm. more human, more poetic, rather than American or mm. Japanese animation, which is based on action, action, action. And you've also got some wonderful modern Russian films at Sunday's event, haven't you? Could you tell us about one or two of those? Yes, we are showing four films and... I'd like to mention that we are showing animation free. The entrance to animation is free to everyone. And then if you would like to see the films, you will have to, you have to buy tickets. And I advise to buy tickets in advance. The four films we are showing, we are starting our program with a documentary, a wonderful documentary film by Vitaly Mansky about contemporary Cuba. As in all Mansky's films, he managed to to show not just the surface, but go really deeply into people's feelings to show how they really live now in Cuba and what their aspirations are. And so that's a Russian director going mm. to Cuba. Does he make yeah. any comparisons with Soviet life at all or, or not really? He doesn't make comparisons, but he shows real picture so mm. that we ourselves mm. make comparisons Wonderful. and that, that, that's a recent film is as a recent documentary is it? yes it's his la latest the documentary latest okay. mm. so is, is this a premiere in fact or is it a no it's not a uh -huh. premiere we showed it at our last year okay. film the film russian festival. film festival right, right. but it hasn't been shown in london since mm. Mm. so it's a second chance Wonderful. for those who didn't see it at the Russian Film Festival. It's mm. it's a chance to see it. Film, of course, is your is one strand of Academia Rosica's activity, but it's a very important one, isn't it? And so you've got you've got these four presentations here. Are, you, are directors coming too? Or no, unfortunately, the directors are not mm. coming because mm. they are all very busy at uh, ah, very uh, uh, <laughs> other <laughs> film festivals. Yeah. But directors will be coming to the UK premieres uh -huh. of their films. Uh, during our 6th Russian Film Festival, which yeah. will be 
on the 2nd to 11th of November. Wonderful. Now, there's a sixth festival you're doing. It's very easy to say the sixth festival, but I certainly know that the amount of work that goes into such a festival, the amount of how hard it is to get people to come and to get everything together. But you've bravely done this. And every time you, you build a new festival, it's got new ideas and new films, and it really has an identity of its own, doesn't it? Do you see, when you do the festival, do you have a one theme running through it, or do you have, or do you, do you just take um, the best of, of films that you find or the best new films you find? This is our main theme, mm. to, to, to show uh, 10 best Russian films. New oh, films. Of the year. New films. Of the year, yes, mm. made during the year. So that people learn about Russian cinema today and not mm. just the older classics yeah. that they may mm. know already. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. I think mm. the, this is very important. And in fact, Russian Film Festival is practically the only event or the only platform for contemporary Russian cinema to uh, show itself and a unique opportunity, mm. unfortunately, for, for British audience to see new mm. Russian films. But great for us. Mm. I mean, these are great opportunities and they're always very busy. These events are quite packed out, aren't they? Often sold out. Yes, absolutely. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. This is Curtain Up, the programme about Russian culture in the capital. I'm Alice Lanyado, and with me in the studio are Julian Gallant, the director of Pushkin House, and Svetlana Adjube, the director of Academia Rossica. I wanted to ask about another strand of Academia Rossica's work, your work with young writers. You've brought out some fantastic magazines, you've been involved in the London Book Fair particularly a year ago. Is that something you felt that really needed highlighting the work of the upcoming writers from Russia? Yes, absolutely. This is why next Sunday, apart from showing four Russian films, we are also presenting contemporary Russian literature. Mm -hmm. And we are preparing, uh, we are going to have a bookstore. We are going to sell books by contemporary Russian writers. We are going to have a raffle so that you can actually win a Russian book. In English or in Russian, you will have a choice. We are going to have books about Russia as well for those who would like to know more More. about Russia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Russian literature is one of the strongest Russian brands. Paradoxically, contemporary Russian writers have to, in a way, compete with Russian classics of the 19th century. Mm Is that quite a a difficult struggle for those young writers to compete with that massive legacy? You know, Anna Karenina, the film's just come out. We all know about Tolstoy. But is it difficult penetrating the UK market? It is very difficult. And one of the reasons is that English language uh, book market is very... It's very closed. It's focused uh, so on English. Like, unfortunately, yes, it's something absolutely. like three percent of, of reading in the English language is is actually works in translation. Mm, less than three percent. Only two point seven percent of the market of translations <coughs> from all other languages. Mm. Fairly so, depressing so statistic. You can, there. <laughs> but you, you, you can imagine how small is the percent of. Russian literature, especially contemporary Russian literature. Mm. Do you think they don't actually recognise that there is an appetite for this kind of literature? I think that they do recognise this, but it's much more expensive to publish a book which is translated, which has to be translated first. Mm. But you, you of course, um, translation is something that you've really supported and supported. You have the translation prize and you've been, you've been encouraging this for a long time. I notice also that your publications of poetry, you don't put them... Uh, uh, well, perhaps like it's not 100, percent but you don't put them in parallel. You actually just present the English. If you're presenting it in English, you just see the English. You don't see it in parallel with the Russian text. So, so you you believe, and you really do make a big effort to support the translation, the difficult task of translating uh, Russian literature. In some of our publications, mm. we do put parallel mm-hmm. text in mm. in Russian and English, and I think it's especially important in poetry. Also, I go to quite a lot of literary events mm-hmm. and poetry events, and I know that English audience actually quite enjoys hearing Russian poetry in Russian because the joy of the I language, think, the melody of yes, the language. Yes, yes. Oh, the sounds are gorgeous. Sure, yes, sure. yes. And this is why next mm. Sunday, on the 16th of September, we're, we are going to read Russian poetry, both in Russian and in mm. English. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. And we are also going to read English poetry in English and Russian. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so are Fantastic. you supporting translation into Russian of English? 
words? No, but being English, you you may not know that uh, quite a lot of Russian children's poetry mm. is trans are translations from English. Right, right. And they are very very popular. So uh, the, those those uh, rhymes, nursery rhymes, nursery yeah, rhymes, nursery yeah. rhymes, yes, nursery rhymes, and all Russian Soviet children read. Um, yeah. In the last, I don't know, fifty or seventy years, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> um, many of them um, are translations from English. From English yeah. <laughs> Incredible. And sometimes done by sometimes the, the very greatest writers have taken on the translations, haven't they? I mean, the, the ultimate example is the Shakespeare sonnets, uh, translated by none other than Boris Pasternak. So. Mm. Can I ask a bit about Academia Rossica and, and how it started and who supports it? Um, it started in year 2000. I I managed to <laughs> persuade my uh, friends from uh, Cambridge University and Oxford uh, University to start an organization which would support promotion of Russian culture and uh, cultural links between Russia and uh, UK. And uh, this is why we decided to call our organization Academia Rosica, Russian Academy. Rosica, as you probably know, is a, a collective word uh, for all Russian things. And mm-hmm. it was invented in France in the 18th century when Russian things were very much in fashion during Catherine the Great. At the same time, uh, Rosica is a sort of Latin word. So Academia Rosica simply means Russian Academy. Mm. And, um, and we... We have two main ambitions, to present the very best of Russian culture and also to present Russian culture of today. Mm-hmm. Right. I think it, it's very important to show British audience or international audience mm. uh, what is actually happening in Russian in Russia and in Russian culture today. Mm. Mm. or what is happening in Russia and, today and, and to show it through Russian culture. <laughs> and who helps you do that? Who are your supporters? We have many supporters, and uh, I have to mention that Russian Russian embassy has been very supportive for for all these years. We are also our projects are, are also supported by Russian government, Russian Ministry of Culture, mm-hmm. Russian Ministry mm-hmm. of uh, Press, and but which is responsible for book publishing mm-hmm. <laughs> program. But you're ind- independent, nevertheless, right? Yes, we we are independent, uh, and I I think it's very important that uh, we are we are not independent. I think we <laughs> uh, we dependent on Russian culture, <laughs> mm. and our greatest responsibility is before Russian culture and Russian artists and Russian writers and Russian filmmakers. We our responsibility in front of them is to show their work in the best possible way. Do Russian companies, oil companies, gas, whatever, feel that it's their duty as well to support organisations like you nowadays, or or doesn't that happen yet? It's happening uh, more and more often, and uh, I think now they are coming uh, to the, they are coming to understanding how important. It is, and uh, they are coming to understanding uh, that their corporate uh, social responsibility includes not only uh, helping Russian children mm. yeah, uh, sure. living in, in, in Russia, which is extremely important, but in a way, the collective responsibility of all Russian companies also to support image of Russia mm. uh, as a country of great culture and not only of great cultural legacy, but also of great contemporary culture. And as you know, Moscow is now one of the cultural capitals, international cultural capitals, one of the most vibrant, interesting culturally place. But it's a relatively new concept and a relatively new culture, isn't it? The, the, the support, the sponsorship of cultural life by companies in Russia. I mean, yes, I mean yeah. companies, the, whole co- the corporate culture is very new anyway. Mm. Um, but I think it's growing, isn't it? I mean, there's this, there's signs, and you obviously have them, your, your supporters show that, and, and uh, it's starting to grow, and it, it's, it feels as if there's a, a whole new uh, Yes, absolutely. World of uh, absolutely. And th- what we are trying to do, we are trying to persuade our, our corporate sponsors to become not only our sponsors, but also our in way partners uh, for me it's very important that they understand why they are supporting this project and they invest in the in our projects not only their financial power <laughs> 
but also their minds, mm. their souls. So they know why they're doing it and why mm. it's so important and pass it on to the mm. new Absolutely. next generation. Absolutely. So we've got the Russian Wave event coming up on the 16th and then the film festival on the 2nd to the 11th of November. Thank you, Svetlana, very much for coming in today. Thank you for inviting me and I uh, look forward to seeing you all at our events. Thank you to Svetlana Adjube and Julian Gallant for joining me in the studio today for Curtain Up. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. I'm Alice Lanyada. Stay with us.